In today's video, we're going to talk about and give you a brutally honest review about Squibbler and give it the Small Town Movie Critic Review, which is a way of scoring how good I think this screenwriting software is. Now, in the final score, we're going to be looking at the following perspectives. We're going to be looking at cost, features, ease of use, resources, and communications. I got to use both hands. So stick around to the end of the video to see how I think Scribbler stands up. I first heard about Squibbler when I was looking at articles for the best screenwriting software for 2022. As I was reading through some of the lists, which contains Final Draft, Scrivener, and some other giants in the industry, I saw that the number one spot was Squibbler. And I was like, I haven't heard of this one before. Well, it turns out that the one of the creators of Squibbler wrote that particular list. Shocking that his product would be the number one spot, right? I know. So let's see how Squibbler really stacks up. Now, the first category that we're going to look at is price. And Squibbler is employing a subscription fee of $9.99 per month. I will note that it didn't like my credit card for some reason, well, maybe because it was going to be coming due at the end of the month, uh, but it gladly accepted my debit card. So to use Squibbler for a year, it will cost you $120. Ouch, that would be expense now. In comparison to that, it would be half the cost of Final Draft, the industry standard. So over two years, you could buy a copy of Final Draft and own that and use that for several years without you. They normally have updates for Final Draft, but you do not always have to buy the updates. With Squibbler, you need to keep buying it month after month after month. You will have access to when you come back to the software to down. They, they will keep your screenplay, but you will not have access to your screenplay unless you have a subscription to Squibbler. So what basically Squibbler is saying as they do in the review is that their product is far superior to Final Draft and worth every penny. So as we go through the rest of this review, we're gonna see if they have that much bang for their buck. Again, $120 a year, is this really a $120 program? Now features is our next category. For all the boasting, it should have some pretty kick butt features, right? Squibbler is more than a screenwriting software. You can use it, also use it to write books. You can do freelance writing, technical writing, and you can write novels as well. So in my mind, it's really trying to compete with Scrivener, which is another screenwriting software which caters to the same type of market and has a, a vast different array, arrays of things that you can write for. It, you can write books in that one, technical writing, novels, and all that type of stuff. But a side note, Scrivener is less than $50 to own, not to rent, uh, as you sort of think of this. Now on their main page, the feature list that they, the features that they list are editor, import export, unlimited templates, share with your team, split screen, cork board, writing goals, cork organization, brainstorming notes, dark mode, and element tracking. To be honest, I can't say that I'm really impressed by these features as most other software out there has something comparable and it is for considerably less money. We'll take a look at some of these features as we move into the next part of the review, which is ease of use. Now to make this uniform, I'm, all, I'm gonna be typing out three to five pages of my latest script, which is, contains almost all the areas of screenwriting that we're going to, that this program could use. And Squibbler has a nice graphical as well as drop-down menu to pick out what type of template to begin with. Um, and as I said before, this is a multifunctional writing program. Uh, but for this review, uh, we're gonna be strictly looking at the screenwriting function. So I selected Thriller Screenplay, since that was the closest to the type of script I would be writing. Now it has some nice text talking about how this approach, how to approach this type of writing. It didn't take me long to figure out how to rename my screenplay and off I went. As I was typing, I noticed something about the font. It isn't the correct font. Screenwriting has a specific font and size to use. Courier 12 to be precise. Guess what? This template I'm using doesn't have the default font for that, instead it gives us Laura 11. And this is just the beginning of the missteps in Squibbler. I had a hard time figuring out how to add an extension to the scene. So example, interior forest dash night. I want you to take a look at the struggle I was having. All right, click on that. So the one thing I don't understand is no, I don't want day. I want night. All right. So 
All right, so one of the things I don't understand while I'm typing this text is that, so I go through exterior forest, I do a dash, um, and I do car, or do forest, and it does night, night. Um, so I need to go back and delete this. I would hope that, and then it takes me up to the top of the screen when I do that. I'm just like, what are you doing? Then even better, it throws you to the top of the page. Frustrating. Now, speaking of text placement, the screen doesn't autocorrect until you are off the bottom of the page. I had to constantly pull down the scroll bar so that I could see what I was typing. And adding to my pain as I wrote my screenplay was the lack of the autofill function. Now, correction, you have to turn that on in the element section for it to work. So I guess that was on me for not knowing, but still, why is autofill not the default? Also, this bugged me uh, uh, as well, but each time I had a character say more than one line of dialogue in a row, there was no continue in parentheses next to his name. Again, I think that should be pretty standard. Now, I was pretty impressed that their dual dialogue was pretty easy to use. However, I noticed that it didn't return the text into the right spot. And it looked to me that the text was smaller, even though it didn't say anything on the text editor. Now that just might be my old eyes, but you decide. Finally, what is up with their parentheticals? It worked like once for me in the whole document. Otherwise, I tried clicking and then typing. It didn't work. I tried highlighting after typing and clicking the button. Nothing happened. So I guess we're not supposed to have parentheticals in our writing. And just to be honest, I was just saying, just doing a voiceover. That's all I was putting in there, a VO, voiceover, or off screen. I wasn't writing like feelings. And I know that you're not supposed to use a lot of parentheticals in your writing, but this was like stuff you're supposed to use parentheticals for. So this leads to our next category for resources. Now there are two places you can look for help. The first is their YouTube tutorials, which leads you to, uh, 99 monthly value. Now, luckily, I'm subscribed to their YouTube channel, so here are some of their videos. It's a newer program, so they've posted about three to four videos videos a month. Now, note they don't have a lot uh, of videos about um, how to actually use the program. They do do a lot of videos about different story processes like dialogue, dialogue and character, helpful for writing, but not so good about using the program. Now this is pretty common for most screenwriting programs to do is to have these type of extra videos to teach you how to do writing. So I applaud them for doing this. The next one is their knowledge center, which talks about using the program. Again, this is a new software program, so there isn't a ton of them, but I am surprised though they didn't have tutorials on how to put dialogue down or scenes down. Um, and the ones I clicked on are pretty short and sweet though. They get right to the point. There's not a fluff there. So I do appreciate that. Communication. Now, I mentioned that I was having problems using the parentheticals. So I emailed them inside the program. There's a function that you can email a question to them. And I have yet to receive an answer. It's been a week. And again, it's a newer program. And on an unrelated note, I also sent them a note over email, a different email address, again, asking them about affiliate links. Again, crickets. Now, I don't care much about affiliate links, uh, but it's inexcusable to take so long to get back if you're having problems with the software. And granted, this is the first type of reviews, but I think most companies are gonna be better at responding. I mean, this just looks really bad, but we'll see uh, when I check other videos. I might find out this is pretty normal for the uh, industry, but as of right now, this really left a bad taste in my mouth. So here we go, as we finish up with our review for Scribbler. I rate, it, I rate on a five reel system, five reels being the best and one being fairly bad. For price, I give Scribbler a one reel. $9.99 a month is pretty steep for a mediocre alpha screenwriting program. In two years, you could buy Final Draft and it has a lot more bang for your buck than Scribbler does. Features, I would give Scribbler two reels. It's real basic stuff. There's nothing that they offer that I can't find somewhere else for cheaper. Also, their elements feature was not to my liking. You know, you might like this. This might be really helpful for you. But for me, I didn't really like it because you needed to have started off creating characters and elements or it screws everything up. And I've noticed that as I was looking at this feature about how much 
it made my life harder to do because of the elements. If I was trying to track through the elements, I'd have to go back through and, and refigure some stuff in my script. Um, so I wish they would have a better tutorial on that, on features, or at least explain it a little better. Ease of use, one reel. It's too buggy. Squibbler really feels like an alpha. When you can't get the font and the font size correct in your templates, that says a lot about how sloppy the rest of the program is gonna be. It's inexcusable that you don't have parentheticals working. The dual dialogue function sort of works, sort of. I mean, it looks fine, but I'm really that, I'm really, sus I, there's a lot of sus about that uh, line right below where you get done with your dual dialogue. I don't think that's, there's some coding that needs to be done there differently. I think I actually spent too much time trying to figure out how to do stuff than actually typing. Resources. Now this was a hard one for me. Um, I couldn't decide whether to give them a one or two reel. Now they are a newer software, so they don't have a lot of videos up. No worries for that, I totally understand that. Now the reason I'm leaning more towards a one is that their YouTube link doesn't work. And there isn't a lot of tutorials on how to use the different buttons within the screenwriting software. So one it is. Communication, one reel. I still haven't heard about my requests in the software program about how to use parentheticals. It's been over a week. Especially as a newer company, I would assume they'd want to make a good impression. I guess I was wrong. So Scribbler gets six out of 25 reels. Yeah, I don't know how to tell you, but don't pick this up. Granted, you know what software works for you at the end of the day, but the price, the lack of features, the alpha version type of feel and lack of customer support really just turns me off on this one. I know this is a new product and I hope they figure it out to write the ship soon. Um, and if they have some major updates in the next coming months or in the next year, I'll be happy to re-review it. But at this point in time, this is definitely a no-go for me. And you'll be able to find other videos in my channel where you can find free software or look at some ones that have a better bang for your buck. Now, if you like this type of content, feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel for, again, more product reviews, a playlist on turning your idea into a first draft, and much, much more about screenwriting, especially if you're a beginner screenwriter. Now, if you have any particular software you want a brutally honest review about, feel free to leave it in the comment section below. And so until the next video, keep writing and have a blessed day.